I just say, isn't Ted awesome? <laughs> like seriously, isn't it amazing? It's like so much fun. Like these people have curated this event for us and brought people in from all over the world. It's just so fantastic. I love Ted. So my name is Sue Gardner and I'm the executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation. Wikimedia Foundation is the nonprofit organization that operates Wikipedia. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody who knows anything about charities knows that uh, people who run charities spend a lot of time uh, going around to conferences and talking to people uh, about their work and what they do and trying to persuade people to donate. So I spend a lot of time doing that too. And what I have done over my time with the Wikimedia Foundation is I've really focused on a message of reassurance, right? People have historically been quite skeptical about Wikipedia. Is it um, a, a high quality website? Is it good enough to be used in schools? Should journalists use it, et cetera? So I've really focused on a message for those people saying Wikipedia is good quality. I've pointed people towards uh, academic studies that have been done suggesting that Wikipedia is of comparable quality to the Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, to the German Encyclopedia Brockhaus, and so forth. And I've talked to people about how the folks who edit Wikipedia, one of whom I just met backstage, the folks who edit Wikipedia are earnest, sincerely motivated, high-minded, altruistic people who want to make the world a better place. All of that is true. But I have found that over the last couple of months, I've become a little bit unhappy with that messaging because it seems to imply that Wikipedia is entirely safe. And Wikipedia isn't safe. Our job is to bring knowledge to people all around the world, and that is in some times, in some circumstances, quite a radical act. So I'm gonna return a little bit later on to that notion of um, Wikipedia being radical, because I'm starting to nuance my message around that. I think it's important for people to understand what Wikipedia is. So I wanna show you this slide. This is my favorite slide. I had it made for me. It shows audiences to websites, news, information, reference websites. This is global audience measured using uh, unique visitors globally around the world. And it's uh, according to Comscore Media Metrics, which is the industry standard for uh, audience measurement on the internet. The blue line at the top is Wikipedia. <laughs> and then clustered down towards the bottom of the chart is a whole series of um, news, information, reference, uh, authoritative sites including, uh, for example, the New York Times is there, uh, Merriam-Webster, the Encyclopedia Britannica, PBS, the BBC, and so forth. So, why do I show you that chart? I don't show you that chart in an attempt to dance on the grave of traditional reference sites. I spent my entire career working in public broadcasting in Canada, and I'm a big supporter of the traditional media. I respect what they do, I like what they do, I think their work is really important. So the reason that I show you that slide is because it's the simplest way that I can imagine to demonstrate the societal impact of Wikipedia, right? It's enormous societal impact. So Wikipedia reaches 408 million people around the world every month. That's what that chart is showing. It is the fifth most popular website in the entire world. And it's a site that's created entirely based upon voluntary efforts of people like the guy I just met backstage and people like the people in this room. I like to introduce audiences to Wikipedians because I think that most people don't think very much about how Wikipedia gets produced. I think people think of Wikipedia as kind of like a utility or a public service, like their water service or their electrical service in their home. I think, you know, you go to the internet, you turn it on, and Wikipedia is always there for you. And I want people to actually understand the folks behind the encyclopedia and how it works. So we have an annual conference of Wikipedians every year. It's called Wikimania. At Wikimania in Gdansk this past July, I commissioned a little film, it's very short, and it's just Wikipedians talking about how they got involved in Wikipedia and why they edit it. If you have knowledge, why you must keep it by yourself? 
you must share it. I think... I liked that the purpose of this website didn't say website, didn't say wiki, didn't say internet, it just said free knowledge for everyone in their own language. When a community is open, it's really made of those who, who dare taking this invitation. And this is an invitation. Of course, you don't have to take an invitation, but it, there is an invitation out there in an edit button to say, come be part. What you know is as important as what we know. You know, you're giving education to people, and not just any people, but the whole of the world. So I feel great by contributing to an encyclopedia that is accessible to virtually everyone in the whole world. It's just making yourself happy by helping others, that's it. Because I want to be happy, I help others. You're working together with so many different people from so many different cultures and uh, it's just amazing. The thing about it for me, what it's really about, it's just really sweet people. Uh, you know, we've got all these really sweet people who are just, they get online and they're typing and instead of yelling at each other or just having a conversation or reading about gossip or whatever, they're trying to build something that everybody else will find useful. I just think it's really sweet, really nice people. So why does Wikipedia work? Wikipedia works because it's a shrine to altruism. It's a place where shy, learned people, like the ones you just saw, where they can bring their crumb of information to the table and share it with other folks. Wikipedia works because the people who know the truth and who want to share the truth are actually more numerous and more committed than people who believe in a falsehood. So lots of people want to spin you, lots of people want to, you know, um, create articles that, that are um, puff pieces, they want to politically manipulate people's beliefs and so forth. But in fact, those people are outnumbered by people who want to help. Wikipedia represents a belief in the supremacy of reason and in the goodness of others. So when Jimmy Wales founded, that was Jimmy, by the way, at the end of that video, that was Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia. When Jimmy founded Wikipedia um, almost 10 years ago, nine and a half years ago, um, he, he faced a lot of suspicion from people. People didn't think that Wikipedia would work. And so he came up years later with this sort of analogy, and he said it was kind of as though he had decided to create a restaurant. There were no restaurants in the world yet, and Jimmy Wales decided to create the world's first restaurant. So he would say to his friends, he would say, you know, I'm going to invite people into my house. I'm going to cook them dinner. I'm going to give them wine to drink. They're going to have this dinner. Then they're going to pay me money, and then they're going to leave my house. And his friends would say to him, Jimmy, are you crazy, right? You can't do that. If you invite strangers over to your house, and if you give them wine to drink, they are going to have fights. They are going to use the knives and forks on the table. They're going to stab each other. The police will be called. The police will be at your house every night. You're crazy. What are you thinking, right? And as we know, Wikipedia actually works. Restaurants actually work, right? It works. And the reason it works is because most people actually don't want to hurt each other. Most people want to help each other. They want to make the world a better place. They want to be nice. So I'm coming now uh, to the end of my actual prepared slides. Um, and what I want to do is I want to return to that notion of radicalism, of Wikipedia being radical. And I want to tell you three stories of people whose lives were um, seriously changed by their usage of Wikipedia. So the first story is a guy, 22 years old, um, living in Israel. This is a guy who grew up in a very religious and very, very orthodox family. In his community, you weren't supposed to read newspapers, you weren't supposed to watch television, you weren't supposed to go to the movies, you were supposed to use special cell phones that didn't connect to the internet, and you went to a special private religious school. This kid didn't like that, he chafed at that. Eventually, he found his way to the internet and he found his way to Wikipedia, um, and whole new worlds opened up to him there. He started reading about politics, he started reading about sociology, about religion, about history, and his whole world changed. That kid decided to leave his faith and he went to a public university, a secular university uh, in Jerusalem where he is now. Now, 
in telling you that story, obviously I am not expressing an opinion about the choice that that person made, right? He made what he thought was the right, right choice for him, and I'm sure that it was a difficult one for him to make. But I want to live in a world where people have access to the information that they themselves want so they can make what feels like good choices for them. The second story that I want to tell you um, is a little closer to home for me. I'm Canadian. Uh, it's about a kid who grew up in the mid-90s in a region of eastern Canada that's called the Miramichi. Canadians who know about the Miramichi, many of them, the people who don't live there, many of them know about it from the novels of a guy named David Adams Richards. David Adams Richards writes these books that, that describe life in the Miramichi, and they are often described, his books, as bleak and gritty and dark and depressing. The Miramichi is a region of Canada that is very dependent for its economic survival on natural resources. So traditionally, the people who live there have been fishermen, they've been miners, um, they've worked in lumber and the pulp and paper industry and so forth. And as the natural resources there have dwindled, the jobs have gone away, right? And people's lives have gotten much more difficult. So this kid grew up in that context, and I don't know what his home life was like, and I don't know what his school life was like, but I can kind of imagine. I do know that his town was too small to actually have a library. They didn't have a library. So that kid made his way to the internet, and that kid made his way to Wikipedia. And again, a whole new world opened up for him. He started editing Wikipedia, and in editing it, he connected with other kids around the world, also very curious, also very smart. His horizons kind of opened up to him. He started to imagine what it would be like to live in other countries. His, his world got bigger, right? Other places that had been feeling very far away to him started feeling closer to home, right? That kid, I met him at a university um, in eastern Canada. He left his small town, he moved to a bigger city, he's in university now, and next year, I think, he'll graduate. He's the first person in his family ever to graduate from a university. And then my third story is about a kid who grew up in a, a kid who grew up, he's gay, he grew up in a country where homosexuality is illegal and where access to sexual information, pornography, but also just reference materials is really hard to come by. That kid found Wikipedia, and on Wikipedia he found a wealth of information about homosexuality. So he was able to find, for example, the history of societal attitudes towards homosexuality. He was able to find the history of legislation um, and how it had changed over time in different countries. Anthropologist description of homosexual behavior in cultures around the world and among animals and throughout history and so forth. Um, he was able to find information about gay and lesbian people's um, fight to be taken, to, to be given equality, including in the United States with gay marriage, which is the debates that are happening right now. Now, if it had been 20 years ago, that kid would not have had access to any of that stuff. He just wouldn't have, right? Because it was only five years ago, Wikipedia existed, the internet existed. Even in his country, he was able to get access to all of that information. I think I can imagine how that changed that kid's life, right? Because he had been a young boy in school teased a little bit by his classmates, bullied a little bit by his classmates, confused about his place in the world. I think that reading all those Wikipedia articles, I think the effect it had for him was it just accelerated him through a lot of doubt and confusion, right? I think it helped him figure out who he was and figure out his place in the world. So, there are lots of stories like that. There are countless stories like that. I hear them all the time. I want to put them into a little bit of context for you. So <laughs> Wikipedia is sometimes described, I don't know if you've ever heard this, as the world's largest collection of articles about Pokemon. <laughs> I know, it's a good thing. <laughs> So it's true that on Wikipedia there are millions, literally millions of articles about topics that are entirely uncontroversial, right? 
topics that um, nobody could possibly object to. And that's a great thing, right? I, I am very comfortable, I am very happy to be the executive director of an organization that has been helping people settle bar bets since 2001. I think it's a good thing. But we know that around the world there are millions of people whose access to information is seriously constrained, right? And it can be constrained sometimes by their governments, sometimes it's constrained by PR firms, by organizations that don't want you to know things. And sometimes it's constrained simply by economic circumstances, right? It may be that you can't afford to buy a lot of textbooks or that your town is too small to afford to have its own library. It may be that you can't afford to go to university, right? So people's access to information is heavily constrained in lots of different ways. I think that those are the people that Wikipedia is primarily for and those are the people who benefit most from it. I think that helping those people is a radical act. And I think that that's why I think we should love Wikipedia. <laughs> I think we should applaud Wikipedia's success. And I think we should support the people who write it. Thank you.